Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. I was looking at you. <laughs> what? I'm just saying I would say the brand of them, definitely. Hard Water Explorer Magnum? Right, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nine one explore magnum. Box of brand new drop trap. Drop trap. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. Um, today we have a couple of different things we want to talk about. During this past ice fishing season, we got a lot of questions about the kind of gear that we use, how we rig our traps up, and just different preferences on certain things. So we're gonna cover that. We have all of our jack traps out and rigged up for you guys. We're gonna talk about that. Um, we also have a very exciting unboxing of some brand new jack traps that we just got in the mail the other day. I ordered them, end of season sale, so that's pretty exciting. So we'll unbox those. Um, but first we have some new lures that we got in the mail from Louis, so. Yeah, so we got some uh, lures in the mail from our partner at Louis Lures. Um, the spring fishing coming up, they send us some nice soft baits for the year. Um, the bait craftsman is Bass Reaper, um, can be found on their website. Um, later in the video we're going to go through these, talk a little bit more about them um, and techniques with them. Um, and to find these, you go to louislures.com. If you use the code fishing for adventure 10 you get 10% off everything on their website. So stay tuned, we're going to open these, open the jack traps, we'll talk a little bit about our gear. Let's get started. Okay, so into talking about um, what kind of traps we use and what we prefer, basically I've started off this season and every other season for years using these. It's just your basic um, HG ice fishing trap and I got these, I don't know, years ago for a birthday present and it's, they're just kind of cheap but they're a great, they're a good trap for certain kinds of fishing. Bass it's, fishing, pike fishing, um, that kind of thing. As far as trout fishing goes, which is what we do so much of, um, the trout have a hard time tripping it because the reel and basically this metal is um, extremely dense and very hard for the trout to trip off because it just is. It takes a lot of pressure to get the flag to go off. Um, so basically what we've switched to or what Chris has been using for years and what um, I have not and what's really been the difference maker for um, our trout game and having fewer stripped flags, um, you know, fewer bait stolen are the jack traps. So these are made right here in Maine, which is awesome and we've had quite a bit of success with them. Yeah, the main difference between these is the, uh, the piece of metal uh, that's used for the flag is much lighter uh, and the sensitivity with the reel, it's extremely sensitive. Uh, with trout tend to play with the bait a lot, of, even if they just trip a little bit. But <laughs> 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 the flag goes right off. Um, and we're finding with live stuff that you're getting a lot of strips and the flags weren't tripping. Um, and also with this mechanism that we have here, um, those aren't wind resistant. These flags, uh, the way they have the little loop here and they clip in, um, the only way they go off is when the reel gets tripped. So it makes it nice, you know, when the flag goes off that there, there's something on the other end and if the trout are stealing your bait, the flag 90% of the time goes off versus some of the other traps that are hard to set off. Mm -hmm. um, Unless you're checking your trap like every hour or so, um, you can be fishing a lot of the day without uh, any bait on. So, I'm not saying that these H2 traps I'm going to get rid of. I'll definitely still use them for pike fishing, bass fishing. I actually have them rigged up for pike right now, which in a different video we will probably end up talking about what the different um, setup is and kind of how that varies. But definitely we'll still keep these traps. It's always good to have several sets. Chris has two sets of the jack traps. I have one set of the jack traps and then one set of the HT traps. So moving forward from that, I think it's a great time to open up the box. I've kind of been like patiently, impatiently waiting because I got this in the mail um, like a couple days ago, but we wanted to open it on camera because that's always exciting. All right, so the box that we mentioned earlier is here. It's the jack trap box that I got in the mail a few days ago and there should be five 26 inch brand spanking new jack traps in here so let's this is see. uh this is their standard trap uh, their... <laughs> this is their top seller and one that i've used and i just absolutely love them they also have a um smaller 
variety of trap that they say is specifically for, you know, trout and that kind of thing, but I just went with the real deal. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that. And the great thing about the jack traps is you can order them with the line already on. You can choose your color of line, color of trap, color of flags. So I got this. I can't remember exactly what they call, what do they call this color of wood? Uh, this remember. is the ash. Ash, okay, yep, so yep. ash wood. And I like black line because you can't, it's, you know, invisible underwater and um, I just always like black line. I feel a little bit more confident fishing with black line. And then I got nice bright red flags. Um, I'm used to looking for either red or orange flags for myself. So that's always exciting. So yes, that's a brand new jack trap. I am super excited to get these rigged up how I like them, um, which we're definitely still gonna talk about how we do that a little bit uh, later in the video. We're gonna get up close and look at each of our traps and, and how we hook up our mono and our leaders and everything. So it's one, two, and the flags are actually orange. I remember I got orange because um, Chris has some red flags, so we might be able to differentiate those out on the ice. We'll see. They're nice. They're like a dark orange, so that's good. They show up great against the snow and against the shorelines. So yeah, this was end of season sale. To, so to get all five of these, which they're usually, I don't know, like over 50 bucks a piece, 52 or something like that, um, I got them for like 37 a piece. So that was definitely worth it. We may have a little jack trap addiction going on here with all these traps here. You almost hooked me there. Did, Did I? Just, yeah, your hooks fly everywhere. What the hell, I didn't even realize that. Jesus. We've gone all ice fishing season without either of us getting hooked, so can we not do that in the kitchen? So we've been getting a lot of questions on how we have our traps rigged up. Um, we just showed you kind of the, the trap type that we use. Um, but as far as how we rig our traps for specifically trout fishing, um, is we have a we have a red hook with a small leader here of a 20 pound test. Then we have it tied on to a 12 pound test mono here with a uh, weight. Um, I believe these are quarter ounce weights. Mm -hmm. And the main thing for me is I, I don't shy away from putting a lot of mono leader on. So like we got to probably about, you know, three feet or four feet worth of mono before we tie it on to a ball swivel here, which then connects to like Liv said earlier, our darker line, we prefer the darker line underwater versus like the white. Um, whether you believe it or not, people say that it's less visible to the fish. Um, and I also personally, and Liv does too, like the red hooks versus the regular hooks. Mm -hmm. um, just seem like we have better luck with those. One thing that has been honestly like a game changer for me, and maybe I'm a little late to the game, I don't know if this is something that you guys have typically used forever um, comment down below and let us know if this is something that you've seen a lot before but these real savers let me tell you something chris hasn't even gotten on this game yet but basically they're like these velcro straps that have a loop in the middle right here and the hook goes through the loop like so and you just wrap it around the reel like that and then velcro it together so that takes away from having to stick yeah. your line stick your hook into your line or on some of my older traps i had like cork around the outside of the reel and i'd stick my hook into the cork um, it just makes it so easy it keeps everything in your pack basket super neat hooks aren't getting tangled um you're not stabbing yourself with your hook it just makes it a great time so i have that on all five of my traps and it just saves the headache during the day. Um, I usually order them online. Amazon is the place to get them. Yes, yeah, so now we'll talk about uh, the pack baskets we use. So um, I don't have too much in here. It's I keep it pretty simple, but um, basically this pack basket liner is awesome. It's homemade by a family member at one point 
and it has a divider down the middle right here and then like a pocket on the side and honestly it just helps to keep my traps separate from like I have um, my little scoop thing in there. I also have um, these, you know, grippers. Hmm? What? And then I have my um, just little tackle box that has extra hooks and leaders and weights and all that jazz in there. So keep it pretty simple. I don't like a lot of crap in here because I just am a neat person. Yeah, and then uh, my pack basket uh, got an L.O. Bean. Uh, it was $100, I believe, for this size. Um, I like to use uh, the Jiffy Ice Skimmer. Um, here it's got the uh, inches on the side, so you can put it, uh, see how much ice there is. You can put your fish up against it for a reference point. Um, and also, a fun fact about this. Yes. Um, this little has a chisel has a chisel on the end and I Chiseled out a pair of our pliers that we left on one of our ponds and then like two weeks went by and It was frozen underneath the ice, but I got it because we had this chisel. So that's yes. very exciting Yep, so on nice cold days uh, you can chisel out your hole. So this is definitely my favorite skimmer that they make uh, and that's by Jiffy and then also I like to keep the little Cabela's pack uh, with a flashlight and knife. Um, you never know uh, what can happen when you're out there, so you got to have some equipment. I got my binoculars. I tend to like to set my traps uh, quite a ways away from me, so these are definitely essential, especially this year. And then something that I always keep in with me in my pack basket is a pair of ice picks, uh, especially early season uh, fishing, late season fishing. Uh, this is like something I don't go out without because uh, you never know whether it's a spring or the ice isn't ready yet and uh, if you fall through you want to be prepared. And uh, Also a great weapon yes. to stab people. <laughs> um, people are pissing you off on the ice and drilling close to you, you can just stab them. No. It's usually what we use them for, for yep. the most part. Um, we also got a throw rope bag this year for the first time. Yeah, I think that's outside in the garage with all of our stuff, but basically it's 90 feet of rescue rope and then you throw the flotation bag and as the bag is being thrown the rope unravels and we should have had that a long time ago it can really yep. save a life save save the day for the most part so that's something that we're happy to add to our collection as well yes and then uh, this is the auger i like i use um it's the uh eskimo rocket uh they believe it's two years old now and my favorite thing about it is it's just super light, uh, it's just 30, I think it's 31, 32 pounds, um, very lightweight, easy to carry around, um, 8 inch hole, I do wish it was a 10. Yeah. So uh, the fuel that I put into the auger is the true fuel, the 50 to 1 mix. Um, I really like that a lot better than mixing my own fuel, it's clean, ethanol free, so when you store it for the winter time, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the ethanol settling in the fuel. Um, this was a game changer for me. It's simple, it comes in here. You can bring it along with you on a trip. You don't have to mix your own gas. Definitely recommend this for anyone that has a 50 to one uh, fuel mix for their auger. Awesome, so that's kind of the basics of um, our gear and whatnot. Obviously we have like our tent, our heater, um, other little stuff that make fishing more of a luxury, but this is all you really need to get out there and get started, so. Um, yeah, I would. Definitely recommend for any of you that are going for trout uh, to definitely less is better when presenting it, uh, the bait to the fish. So, you know, one weight on there. Um, if you can do the red hook, uh, it's not essential, but definitely I like the red mm -hmm. hook better. Um, but most importantly is just the presentation of your bait in the water column. Take the time to sound the hole, um, be in the right amount of water when you're fishing for trout. This year we fished uh, more shallow than we normally did. Uh, we fished between like six and even a foot and a half of water. And it ended up really paying off though because we, I got some of the nicest fish this year in honestly like two feet of water, which is something I would have in the past turned my nose up at even fishing, but it really worked out this year, so. Yeah, so if you're going for trout, don't be afraid to go shallow and try it out. And the next biggest thing that we learned this year was um, 
and in the past really is if something's not working you're not catching fish it's a decent day out it's not below zero and you can come out of the shack and move those traps around try different things you know different uh, even if it is below zero we did plenty of yeah, that we this did. year too yeah. yeah so really more of the story is if you're not catching them move some traps around it can be the difference in the day multiple times we've gone out uh had a slow morning and we totally you know we moved half of our traps to all these different locations and yeah it was a walk but it paid off and we had some caught some of our personal best on days when we had a slow morning so especially pace. when you're fishing a newer spot i mean you can only do so much research online about depths and um you know the the bottom and everything really getting out there and moving traps around and seeing for yourself what works and it can vary like day by day too that's why we watch our weather patterns we fish storms pre-storm fronts like all that just makes a big difference yeah and definitely day to day we've had something work one day and we go back do the same thing and you know it's doing another thing that day so really just pay attention to what's going on daily uh, when you're fishing an area and just adapting if you're getting more bites in six to eight feet of water with the trout then and the shallower ones aren't going off, maybe move a couple of traps out and kind of pinpoint what the fish are doing. That's why it's called fishing, not catching. Yeah, it's all about adapting and trying to catch those guys. Well, I think it's a great time to talk about a little bit more about what Lou's Lures and Bass Reaper has sent us. And I'm really excited for open water fishing, actually. Yes, you know, ice fishing's coming to an end. It's a sad day for me. It's, it's <laughs> The sad day for me is ice fishing is uh, one of my favorite types of fishing, but um, means warmer weather here and spring fishing's coming, so. All right, so we're gonna start opening up these exciting little guys that we got earlier this week um, in the mail from Bass Reaper through Louise Lures. And again, finding these online using our discount code Fishing for Adventure 10 will get you 10% off of everything on their website, and they have a lot of cool stuff to offer. So. Yeah, we'll put the code down below in the description. Um, again, that's Bass Reaper. Baco. And I really like their logo. I get a thing for like Grim Reapers yes. and that kind of stuff. Super cool. <laughs> As she has oh, wow. a skull cup. Literally. That's my cup I drink of. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So they sent us some. Um, some stick baits, some Sankos. Um, we got, this is the baby bass color. It's kind of a greenish with a lighter um, side to it here. I actually really like those ones. I've used them before from other companies and stuff, so I'm really excited to see how theirs does. But that's kind of one of my go-to um, as yeah. far as soft bait goes. It's got the good slot here. I don't know if you can see that here for the uh, kind of drop shot approach. Um, Liv and I both like to fish a uh, wacky rig mm -hmm. uh, with these in springtime. It looks like their other um, five inch worm here is in the color June Bug. So it's kind of like a, a tealish green color. Really nice looking. Um, same style as that one, just a different color. Yeah. So that's really cool. I'm a big fan of the notches. Uh, some companies don't put this notch here um, in the bait, but it helps uh, with hooking. Um, helps keep it weedless. Definitely. Hides the hook. Yep. People do different things with rubber bands and different things to keep um, get more uses out of these. Uh, but I've found that just even the slot in general, just you get a few more bites and a few more fish on them. More use out of it. So the next thing that we have is the Ned Worm. <clears throat> yep. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the Ned Rig. Um, they sent us, uh, Louis sent us two darker colored Ned Rigs. This is called Fruitcake. Yeah, and this one is Harvest. Um, haven't fished the Ned Rig a ton in my life, um, but when I have, it's been successful. I um, usually like to use it when, you know, not all other things are working, maybe a clear water lake, uh, fish are a little slow. Um, it's kind of the same drop shot approach as the wacky style worm. Um, you can use any jig head um, put on here with a hook exposed up top. Um, it's kind of the same thing, kind of a drop shot approach. You cast it out, majority of your bites are going to be on the bait falling down the water column, um, specifically in clear water lakes. The fish can see uh, the lure from farther away. So, as whether it's the wacky style worm here or the dead rig. Um, coming through the water column, uh, going down, um, kind of gives those fish that are 
maybe kind of relaxing or a little bit lethargic gives them more time to look at a potential uh, food source so they tend to kind of on a slow fishing day definitely try either the ned rig or the wacky style worm well i think that pretty much wraps things up for this video both of these will be in the description uh the bass reaper company uh louis lures will be in the description and don't forget fishing for adventure 10 for 10 percent off anything um, on the Louis Lure website. Uh, if you haven't, go check them out. Great stuff. Stock up for the springtime. Um, open water fishing's coming and we are excited. So. And thank you guys for watching as always and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us out. Yes. A lot. Thank you. And we thank everybody for our support. We had 100 subscribers recently and uh, that's pretty exciting when you're just yeah. kind of getting going. So We're very thrilled and we thank you for all your support. And any questions about anything in the video, put them down in the comments and we'll, we'd love to answer them. Alright, have a great day. Hey guys, so welcome to this week's video. Bro, um, in the back. <laughs> we're fighting. It's, it's good.